Germany's defense policy is once again in the spotlight as Berlin weighs the future of its airborne early warning and control capabilities. Defense Minister Boris Pistorius recently described Saab's global eye as being in pole position to fill an impending gap, signaling a potential shift in German procurement priorities. The issue is more complex than a straightforward aircraft choice, it reflects broader concerns about NATO's collective defense posture, European strategic autonomy, and the urgent need for national resilience in the face of fast-moving security challenges. At the center of the debate lies NATO's decision to retire the long-serving E-3A Sentry Fleet, an iconic capability that has for decades been stationed at Geilenkirchen Air Base in Germany. These Boeing 707-derived aircraft, despite numerous upgrades, are now aging rapidly. They require extensive maintenance to remain operational, and their dated avionics increasingly struggle to match the requirements of modern, contested airspace. While NATO has opted for a long-term replacement in the Boeing E-7A Wedgetail, that program is only expected to reach initial operational capability by 2031. For a country like Germany, heavily exposed at the heart of Europe and acutely aware of how quickly its skies can become crowded in a crisis, waiting nearly a decade is an unattractive option. This explains the growing interest in Saab's Global Eye, a platform designed to deliver comprehensive surveillance across multiple domains. Built on Bombardier's global 6000 and 6500 business jet family, the Global Eye incorporates the Area ER radar, advanced maritime surveillance equipment, and a suite of electro optical and electronic support systems. The aircraft is engineered not only for air defense roles but also for monitoring sea lanes, detecting ground movements, and feeding data into command and control networks in real time. Its endurance of more than 11 hours and its ability to operate from relatively short runways give it deployment flexibility that is particularly appealing for European states that value mobility and quick basing options. The German debate reflects both national imperatives and alliance considerations. NATO's collective approach to airborne command and control is built on pooled assets, and the six wedge tails being acquired through the Alliance's procurement agency will be Alliance-owned and operated for common missions. Germany, however, is considering a national capability that could be used primarily for its own defense and made available to NATO on a case-by-case -case basis. This dual approach suggests that Berlin is seeking to balance its role as a NATO ally with its responsibility to ensure that the Luftwaffe has tools it can call upon without delay. The two paths are not contradictory, rather, they are complementary, and together they provide a hedge against both technological and political risk. Germany is not alone in this thinking. France has already moved forward with its own order for Global Eye aircraft, signing a letter of intent for two jets with an option for more. Denmark has examined the possibility of buying the system through a government-to-government -government arrangement with Sweden. These moves point to the emergence of a European subset of Global Eye operators who could, in effect, create a regional surveillance network independent from but interoperable with NATO's Wedgetail fleet. Such an arrangement could diversify Europe's intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance architecture while still aligning with alliance-wide data-sharing standards. From a technical standpoint, the Global Eye offers some important strengths for Germany. Its area ER radar is capable of detecting airborne threats at ranges of up to 550 kilometers, depending on altitude, and its electronically scanned array technology allows it to adapt to cluttered or contested environments. The radar can prioritize sectors of interest, tracking fast-moving fighters, low-observable drones, or cruise missiles that might otherwise slip through detection. Complementing the air picture, the Sea Spray radar adds maritime and ground coverage, including synthetic aperture imaging and moving target indication. Together with the electro optical slash infrared sensors, AIS receivers, and electronic support systems, the Global Eye provides a true multi domain situational awareness package. This is critical for a country like Germany 
whose security concerns extend from the Baltic Sea to Central Europe and beyond. The operational flexibility of the Global Eye is another factor worth noting. Unlike larger aircraft derived from airliners, such as the 737-based E-7A, the Global Eye's business jet platform offers more modest basing and support requirements. Its smaller footprint could allow operations from bases already hosting intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance units, easing integration into the Luftwaffe's infrastructure. The trade-off, of course, is reduced space for crew and systems compared to a full-sized airliner. Yet Saab argues that digital workflows and advanced automation reduce the need for large onboard teams, offsetting some of the limitations imposed by the smaller fuselage. Politically, Berlin's consideration of Global Eye is shaped by its broader defense commitments. Germany has long relied heavily on NATO's pooled AWACS fleet while channeling resources into other national defense programs. By openly signaling a willingness to invest in its own airborne early warning capability, the government is acknowledging the strategic vulnerability created by dependence on multinational assets alone. The war in Ukraine and heightened tensions across Europe have only reinforced the importance of rapid national decision-making and the ability to act independently within the NATO framework. A German-owned fleet of global eyes could ensure that Berlin is never left waiting for alliance consensus before conducting critical surveillance or air policing missions. Timing is also central to the calculus. The E-3A life extension program will keep NATO's existing fleet operational until around 2035, giving the alliance a bridge to the Wedgetail era. However, this extension does not eliminate the operational risks inherent in flying aircraft that are decades old, nor does it resolve national-level capability gaps. Germany's defense planners appear to view the global eye as a way to close that gap within just a few years, rather than leaving the Luftwaffe without an independent platform until the early 2030s. Pistorius's pole position remark should be read in this context, it signals pragmatism, not rivalry, as Berlin seeks to secure coverage sooner rather than later. The broader European defense environment is another key driver. With France, Denmark, and potentially other regional partners considering or committing to Global Eye, there is the possibility of building a cooperative European surveillance architecture. This could strengthen transatlantic defense by reducing pressure on NATO's pooled assets while ensuring that European states take on a greater share of the burden. It would also create industrial and political benefits, as Saab's system represents a major contribution from a European manufacturer at a time when many high-profile defense programs rely on American suppliers. For NATO, the existence of parallel fleets is not necessarily a drawback. The Wedgetail program remains the alliance's chosen long-term solution, and its entry into service around 2031 will mark a significant modernization of the command and control enterprise. Yet in the intervening years, the Global Eye offers a viable stopgap for individual nations that cannot afford to wait. Provided data standards and operational training pipelines are harmonized, a mixed ecosystem of E, 3 as, globalize, and future wedgetails could operate seamlessly together. Such interoperability is not theoretical, it has already been demonstrated in multinational exercises and cooperative deployments. Ultimately, Germany's apparent tilt toward Saab's global eye reflects the shifting realities of European security. The traditional model of relying on NATO-owned assets for critical functions is proving inadequate in an era of heightened threat perception and contested airspace. National resilience, flexibility, and speed of deployment are now driving procurement choices as much as cost or alliance politics. For Berlin, the decision is not about replacing NATO's wedge tails but about ensuring that Germany can contribute effectively and independently to the alliance while safeguarding its own airspace. The coming months will reveal whether Germany finalizes its selection of the global eye. 
If it does, the choice will underline a pragmatic recognition that the world is changing too quickly for defense planning to be confined to long procurement cycles. By securing a platform that can be fielded within a few years, Germany would not only enhance its own security but also signal to allies and adversaries alike that it is serious about adapting to the demands of modern warfare. In that sense, the Global Eye is more than an aircraft option, it is a symbol of Berlin's determination to close vulnerabilities before they can be exploited.